Today we're going to talk about spatial disorientation. I'm going through all the different parts of uh, our special interest items because I think they apply to life. We've talked about, uh, you know, the task saturation, complacency, misprioritization, stuff like that. But spatial awareness is important in the jet and in life. It, there's no worse feeling in the world than you're on somebody's wing and you start getting the leans and you're in the weather and you don't know which, which way is up. There's no worse feeling than uh, on a clear VFR day and you're over the water and there's no clouds and it's like a mirror and you don't know which way is up, which way is down. And that can be said for life as well, where you're going through a turbulent time, you're going through, everything seems foggy, nothing seems clear, you don't know what's ahead of you, and you kind of don't know which way is up, because life's just not, it's not going well right now. And when, what we brief to, what we talk about, because there, you know, there's different types of spatial disorientation. There's the kind you don't know about, where it just happens, you think you're doing the right thing, next thing you know, you know, you're into the, you're running into the ground or water or whatever. There's the incapacitating kind where, you know, you're just so messed up that you can't, you just can't function. You can't, you're just spiraling into the ground. In fact, I had Stinky uh, Smith on the channel a while back and, you know, that's what happened to him. He was doing an out uh, or a maneuver in the F-16 at night and he got spatial disoriented and he just did this big corkscrew into the water and he ejected like 0.69 seconds before he was out of the window. So... We, we talk about that, but then how do you get out of it? And what I always remember is recognize, confirm, recover. You know, so recognize that you're in that position. Uh, confirm with your instruments, because we have to trust our instruments at this point, unless you're flying a T-38A, in which case, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, you're done. You're done. And then recover, <laughs> you know, you're basically going to the sky pointer, you know, rolling to the nearest horizon, pulling, you know, you use your afterburner, depending on, you know, whether your nose low, nose high or whatever. But you recognize, confirm, recover. And in life, when you have this situation where I'm spatially disoriented, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's going on. I don't know which way is up. We have to step back, just like we talked about the six Ps, which Deuce uh, reminded me it's not pause, it's point, because we point everybody same way, same day, but same thing, pause, point. But we have to, that, that was the weapon school answer. Uh, we have to, I failed that right. But we, <laughs> we, we have to recognize that we're in this situation. We have to go, look, I'm in a bad spot right now. Uh, and then we confirm what the situation is. And this is kind of a point where I'll say, this is where you need to start bringing in people that can help you, whether it's mental health advocates, psychologists, psychiatrists, counselors, uh, friends, family, confirm that they're there for you and confirm your situation and a way forward and then recover. You know, you have to take it day by day, piece by piece and whatever's going on, you don't try to tackle the whole thing all at once. You try to break it down into its smallest pieces and then eventually you'll be able to get through it because it, it's usually just a function of, of time and effort. And if you take those two things and use the tools and assets that you have available, you know, September is Suicide Awareness Month. So I'm going to throw another pitch out for 988. I'm going to throw another pitch out for bringing your wingman into the fold, bringing your friends and family. Don't make... Uh, a temporary problem permanent and not just for you, but for them, because you're not just affecting yourself when you make that decision. You're affecting everybody that cares about you. You're affecting everybody uh, that loves you. And even though it may seem like it's a dark time, there are people out there that care and there are people out there that will uh, try to help you, even if you don't even know them. You know, I just watched a video uh, of a veteran that was pulled over on the side of the road and a trooper got out with him and he said, you know, I just need a hug. And he gave him a hug and, you know, he's like, I don't want to go to the hospital because I can't afford it. And he's like, no, 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 the state will cover that. Let's get you the help you need. And that is the point. You may have these preconceived notions about what it means to go get help, but I guarantee you it's better to, to re recognize, confirm, recover and that recovery of getting help than it is to suffer with it or make a poor decision. So, gawky, what you got, man? Yeah, no, man, all that, that's good. You know, the whole crux really behind the recovery is you got to have a solid reference point that's uh, that's real. 
and that that is uh, that it's valid, right? So you talked about flying a T thirty eight, and the the problem there was our reference points where we we didn't trust them either. So uh, a great thing they would do in the Navy. I'm not sure if they did in the Air Force. Did you do the Hilo Dunker Moober? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it appears you have. So what they teach you is, you know, they they blindfold you. You can't see. They throw you in this helicopter, drop you in a pool, flip you upside down. Now you got to get out. So, you know, when you go upside down, they always tell you, don't lose that reference point. You got to hang on. As soon as, if you let go of your reference point, you're done. You have no idea which way is up, sideways, whatever, because you're, 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 you don't have your, uh, you know, you can't see. So, hey, how does that apply in life? Well, you always got to have, I think we talked about last week about always striving to surround yourself with good people because when you like, when it's, when the freaking place is burning down and you need to call somebody like just for like what's happening, like the people you call, you know, it shouldn't be your, it shouldn't be your drug dealer. You know, <laughs> you shouldn't have one of those anyways, but you know, it should be somebody that has always been, you know, like your, like your rock. It could be your grandma, it could be your dad. It could be your, uh, you know, it could be your pastor, could be, you know, but, um, you know, it's always a good idea also before things go sideways to kind of have these people in your mind, like, Hey, if I ever get a little crazy, like I'm calling this person for family stuff, this person for work stuff. Cause you, you know, you don't want to be figuring this out, uh, while you're flailing, that's probably the worst place to be. So, uh, you know, uh, in aviation, even if you get a private pilot, I mean, they hammer down on how to recover from spatial disorientation because it will kill you in an airplane and it will, I mean, it could kill you in real life too. Just, you know, if you, if you lose, you know, if you lose your, uh, you're essentially losing your SA, right? Your situational awareness, which, which basically means, you know, what's happening to you, what you feel is happening to you really isn't happening. Right. So yeah, um, yeah like Moover said, uh, get some, get some help. Just make sure that, uh, the, whoever you call is, you know, is somebody that, uh, that's grounded in, in whatever it is that you're, you're dealing with and can get the help. Yeah. Grounding is a very, um, common psychological term as well. I mean, even to the point of go walk barefoot on grass or, you know, on the sand, on the beach, whatever it, it's about bringing yourself back to, you know, a reference point, something objective, you know, and that's, that's what we talk about with the recognize, confirm, recover. We're bringing ourselves back because we can have these misperceptions of what's going on. You know, your inner ear, you know, your uh, illusion, visual illusions, whatever I talked about, the, you know, the, 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 the calm water versus the clear sky. Sometimes the visual illusion will make you think that, you know, one way's up because it's just reflections. But we get those and we need to have some objective reference point to bring us back to reality and in the jet that's our instruments most of the time well it's not t38a but in reality it's you know what you talked about your friends family you know priest faith whatever it is that that grounds you back into into your zero 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 you know you're 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 being centered in helicopter flying you brought up a good point where you're talking about heli uh aviation but we did this whole thing because we've had two mishaps now recently here in the local area of spatial disorientation, contro controlled flight into terrain where uh, a, 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 a good helicopter pilot, a lot of experience, you know, one hit the wires, one, you know, spatial deed in the ground. And the Heli Expo folks, the HAI guys talked about the 56 seconds to live is once you get into the soup, you know, and you're not instrument rated, you're not used to all this stuff and again, can apply to life where you get into a bad situation you're just not used to dealing with, you've got 56 seconds to figure it out. You got the rest of your life to figure this out. And so before we get to that point, one of the things is taking the ego out of it. And in helicopter flying, we do that with the land and live. You know, if you can't turn around, you know, because maybe the sloping terrain or, or whatever the clouds are moving in, you can't, declare an emergency imc or whatever whatever it is they just go you're in a helicopter dude land land and live land make that embarrassing phone call and then live to fight another day and sometimes in life we have to say uncle take ourselves out of that situation and 
live. And by that, I mean, okay, I may go get help and I may not be able to do whatever job, especially pilots, right? Because we're always afraid of the FAA. You know, if I go say, hey, I need, I need help, that may take me out of the cockpit for six months or whatever as I'm dealing with, you know, antidepressants or whatever it is, whatever your situation is. It is better to do that, land and live and take that time and make that embarrassing phone call than it is to deal with it for the rest of your life because you will have the rest of your life to figure it out and it may not be very long. So that's all. That's my, yep. my pitch for that today. Anything I else? I like it. Me? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> these are always interesting. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want it to be preachy, you know, but I do think that we need to discuss it as pilots because mental health is something that we're afraid to talk about. Yeah. And you know what's, I mean, yeah, as I become more, you know, as we became more experienced, I think it became less of an issue. I, I actually did see, you see a lot of this stuff in the beginning phases of flight training because you yeah. don't, you don't know how to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I remember talking even with Wombat stuff, you know, it's like, how am I? <laughs> so, but yeah. Unable, unable, unable. Yeah. No, you no know, the most do. powerful world word in the English language is no. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you have to be able to say no, you have to be able to know your limit that, you know, you said it earlier, the man's got to know his limitations. It, it, it's better to, to be on the ground wishing you were up there. Like we're oh, all right yeah. now. Then. Uh, Dude, I'm wishing you were down here because I've been both places and yeah, you know, yeah, I'll take, I'll take, you know, Oh, the memories over. Oh God, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I was a safety officer and I went through safety school in the Navy and stuff. And like ha having read lots of accident reports, like the one thing that, uh, I, that I've taken away from it is like way, way better to be precautious and just land and get made fun of by your peers yeah. uh, than, than not to. <laughs> if, if only you look at the AIB reports and the oh, SIBs yeah. and you, all you go, if only somebody had said no. Yeah. If only yeah. somebody said, dude, this is stupid. Yeah. You know, why are we pushing, why are we pushing this? And sometimes it's us as the senior, you know, field grade officers. We've got to go do this is dumb. This does not pass a common sense test. Oh, yeah. 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 I've, yeah. I've even said that before and then still flew. And I felt like the whole time, I'm like, this is so stupid. I knew it. Yeah. You're like, I knew it. Yeah. I, yeah. I always think of T-Bear and as ominous. I told you. Yeah. I told you. You know, yeah. you knew this. I told you. you. Did it anyway. <laughs> I, I, I knew it. <laughs>